Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. It's been a while since I've seen you. Um, since we are releasing kind of some of the quarantines or easing up a little bit, we're getting back to our normal routine, back to our normal filming schedule. So I really thank you for staying tuned this long. Um, and I hope you're excited to learn what we're going to learn today, because I am. I'm here with Miss Mary Pat. Uh, she's going to step us through how to wedge clay, how to form the clay into a pot, some of the processes that are involved. It's really tricky stuff, but she makes it look really, really easy. I'm going to be intermittently kind of jumping in and out of the camera, in and out of frame. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Miss Mary Pat, and we'll take it from there. Hey everybody, hi, thank you for joining us today at SAMA. Um, I thought that today, since um, I wasn't ex <laughs> exactly planning to do this today, but that's another story, um, I would take you through the process of what it's like to make a pot. And when you go to a store, say the SAMA gallery for instance, you'll see a mug on, on a display and you'll say, gosh, you know, why is that mug $40? I have paid probably the most for a mug, it was about, well, $100 is the most I've ever paid for one mug, and that's because I appreciated the art, I appreciated the artist, um, and I wanted a, a, an art piece of that person's. But, you know, for the most part, I think the average price of a really decent cup is about $40, and that's a lot to spend on a mug. And so what I wanted to show you is why it takes um, uh, why it costs $40 or even $30 or even $25 for one really cool coffee mug. That's because it's handmade and you're not just paying for you know the materials itself. The materials is only you know a, a few dollars at the most but you're paying that artist for their talent and their experience and, um, and the best part of it is you can enjoy your cup of coffee even better. So it all begins with a bag of clay. And in this studio, we have several different kinds of clay. And here are just four. Um, this is just your basic white clay, which when you put a glaze on this, the glaze is really bright and colorful. This is my favorite, which is a very, I call it, it's a black clay. And um, it's just stunning. And the glaze on this, looks completely different than this. And let me show you an example. example. Yeah, yeah. That, that black clay is one of my favorites oh, too. It, it is really, really stunning. And they, they, they work similar as far as clay, but the color and the way that yeah. they react to some of your, the, um, not dyes, the, uh, the, the glazes. The glazes, yeah. yeah. So this is the black clay and this is the white clay. But look at the color difference. I mean, it's just beautiful. And I prefer this way more than I prefer this. So this is one of my favorite clays to use. But today, during the demo, um, I'm going to be using this, which is called a 213 red clay. And it's kind of like a really dark terracotta. And this is terracotta, and this is really common. And this is what you see in a lot of our pots that you buy for flowers. So this is a low fire. You only fire this to cone 04, which is like 19, 28 degrees. And this one fires up to 2,232 degrees. So, um, Today we're going to be using this clay, the 213, and I have a bag of it, and this 213, it comes in 25 pound bags, <laughs> and it, um, it's made in Pittsburgh, in Carnegie, by Standard Ceramics, which is where I get all my clay, it's nice to keep business local. So when it comes from, um, out of the bag, it is basically just extruded through a huge extruder into a 25 pound bag, but it's always good to wedge the clay between 75 and 100 times. And I'll do it as much as I can, but for demonstration purposes. It is a process, and yeah. this is where she's making it look easy. Uh, and I can tell you guys, I've tried this myself, and there is an art form to how you like knead it's almost like a knead yeah there's like three different ways to to knead um clay one's this beautiful spiral so it looks like a seashell mm -hmm. i don't know how to do that but there are other potters in here that know how to do it i do the ram's head right here which kind of looks like an eye and, a nose and, <laughs> and then you know here's your your little horn so then um usually you wedge this and the whole purpose of wedging the clay is to get the molecules of the clay to, to get all 
bound and, and um, tightened together so it makes for a stronger pot when you, when you throw it or when you make some slab artwork. And it also, um, uh, it's really important to wedge the clay to make sure you get any air bubbles out. And air bubbles really aren't common when you're getting it out of a fresh bag of clay, but it's really common when you um, are using recycled clay. And um, clay here never goes down the drain. It gets thrown into recycled bins. Question. Yes. What is the tool that you use to cut that? Oh, Morgan likes to call this the <laughs> Italian neck. <laughs> Really, it's just a really thin um, wire cutter. But that is my favorite part of this process is taking that through the clay. <laughs> it just it's really satisfying to just pull that and get this nice sumptuous chunk off. <laughs> yeah, so this is just your standard El Chifo wire. I have more expensive ones, ones that are thicker, and I use the thicker one when I have a, a block of clay that's really dried out. I need a break it up into smaller pieces to rehydrate it. And then I have one that's really thin that I use to cut my um, thrown pot off of the bat or off of the wheel head. Okay, so I lost count, but... I'm uh, sorry, I didn't mean no, to... No, 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 no. that's okay. okay. I, th I, think, um, I think this is good enough. So then what I do is I get my handy scale here and I... Um, Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, then, I, then I cut a chunk off and I weigh it. So if I'm making a cup, I want to make it, um, depends if I want to make a, a 12 ounce coffee cup, I'll use, usually use between 18 and 20 ounces. Um, right now I have 16 ounces. Let's see, that's 16 ounces. But I'm, I'm just going to make a base about this size right here. So you can see how I do this. So then what I do is I, I measure it out and then I have to pack it into some tight, tight um, balls in which I'll use that to throw. And I'm going to make another one just in case I screw up the first one. <laughs> which is or make the cup for a buddy if they're both successful. Yeah. The maybe, cup to maybe, give away. Make a, maybe make a, a couple of them. <laughs> so today um, I'm going to make window sill bases. Last night it was 6.30, I was sitting at home watching the news and I just thought I cannot sit here for the rest of the night. So I came down here and in less than two hours I did all of this and threw like six. 15 to 17 pots. I believe it. You're a master at it. You make it look super easy. So, I, there's a complete skill set to yeah. it for sure. Yeah, my daughter came down. She joined me. She um, she was not successful, but she practiced <laughs> throwing pots, which is always a good thing to do. Practice, practice, practice. Practice me. Uh, that's a lot of things. People watch this on Facebook or YouTube, and they say, oh. Yeah, I want to. I want to make pot. I'm going to throw pottery. But what they don't realize is how much um, you just don't massage it, move it around, mm -hmm. push it. Yeah, it takes a lot of physical effort. There is a lot of strength required for sure. Yeah. Okay. So now I have four balls, and now I am going to take you over to my wheel. Oh, so these are the windowsill bases. So this is a two-part base. As you can see. It looks like a thrown pot from the front. It has a regular thrown pot profile. Linda says hi, Linda Calloway. Oh, hi, Linda. hi, Linda. And if you look at it from the side, I, I took it and I squished it. And that way it'll fit on your windowsill without sticking out or at risk of falling over. So what happens is, is I will add this bottom as a slab afterwards. So that's part of the process that I'm going to take you through. So basically, this is what we're going to make. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful yes. shape. So I'm going to grab these okay. right here and come on over to my wheel with me. I'm going to snag this off. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you got it. Okay, go. Gotcha. Come on, kids. Let's go. Oops. So this is my favorite wheel for throwing. And it's an electric.
electric wheel, and this is a bat. So on this wheel, as you can see, I have two pins sticking out. And if I were to throw one here and rub my hand against it, this pin would really hurt my hand. And really what they're for is to put the bat in on this. That way when you're done throwing a pot, you could just lift the bat right up off of the wheel and set your pot down without fear of, um, of ruining anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn my light on. Oh, look at that light, that's awesome. That cool? That's a great light. Oh, neat. Yeah, pretty neat. So in here I have all my tools. I have my sponge. I have my needle tools. I have my, I use, use this tool to um, lift the bat up. And just a little, um, uh, I forget what this is called. I should actually know that too. <laughs> uh, scraper <laughs> is what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> I call it a kitchen tool. Yeah. <laughs> moisten the, the wheel head or in this case the bat with just a little bit of moisture and then I take my ball of clay and I throw it down as close to center as possible like that and I can see just by looking at it and if you look at it this way see how well that sticks <laughs> you can see that it's a little off center so I don't want to pick it up off of the bat what I want to do is I want to wiggle it Kind of wiggle it back in the center a little bit. And this is where your muscles come into play, this yeah. next part here. Okay, so my nails are short because if you have long nails, it'll dig into the clay. And I took all my jewelry off because... You I don't ate. you don't want to go there. <laughs> and so what I'm doing now is I'm going to center my clay. And how I center my clay is I um, rest my elbows on my knees. I um, use actually this leg to help keep my left arm stable. And basically I squeeze it using this part of my hand kind of up into a cone shape. And I keep the wheel um, relatively snow, slow, not this sl too slow because then you won't be very productive. But if it's too fast, it, it just makes things a little harder. So I squeeze it up and then what I do need to do now is I need to push it back down. And there's no set amount of uh, times that you have to do this, like do this three times. You do it until it's centered. And if you do it the first time and it's centered, then you're done and then it's time to open up. But I can see by looking at this that it is not centered. Can right. You yeah. It's the, there's yeah. a little wobble in it yet wobble. and you got to get that wobble so, out. So now I'm going to push it back down using this part of my hand. And my hands are always working together. It, there's always like a trinity. You know, we have the elbows are anchored and the hands are always working together. So I'm pushing this down with a lot of force. It just doesn't go down by itself. Okay. Now I'm squeezing it back up. And you can see this looks a lot more better. improved than the last version. Much, much better. And, and you, whenever I feel the clay getting sticky, I just get a little bit of water. I moisten my hands. This on my hands is called slip. It's basically just watered down clay. And this feels pretty centered. And you can see from my hands, they're not moving so much. So that only took two times. Yep. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. And when I make this pot, I'm actually going to open it up the whole way to the wheel head. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put both my fingers down in it and I'm going to keep going down. Add a little bit of water because I feel it getting sticky. And I see I just knocked this slightly off center, but that's okay because I'm going to squish the pot anyway. And you know how you stop it from being wiggly? <laughs> Watch that. It doesn't wiggle anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now my hands are working together, and I'm just pinching up the sides of this pot. Not aggressively, but enough to move the clay around. You do make it look very easy. <laughs> No, I have not. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now I'm squeezing it up again. And I actually want to see the lines, these ridges, these ridges those, in the yeah. clay, because I don't want these pots to be sm perfectly smooth. I was just thinking that some of the most interesting pottery that I've ever seen isn't necessarily in its perfection, but it's imperfection in that it has a, a ridge or it's off-centered or it's curvature. Um, it makes it interesting. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, perfection is nice um, and I appreciate it when it's done really well. So what is that tool doing? This is uh, a sponge tool and it allows me to get into narrow spaces to get the water off of the inside of the cup. Because water on the inside of a pot is not good because it'll um, leave cracks in the bottom, but I, I have no bottom on this one, but I, it's force of habit and I want to keep it clean. And you raised it up just a little bit more just even with that bit last more. bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I can change the shape of the pot. We'll do this a couple of times, because these are always fun to do. Like maybe I want to make this pot just go out just a little bit. So I'm just pushing out with one finger the inside of this pot. And if you can see, if you pay attention, this is the part she's bellying out. Mm -hmm. It's like a little belly on it. And I'll squeeze this in just a little bit. It's also uh, kind of important to note that through the drying process and baking the clay, it has a shrinkage factor. So whatever cup size you're looking to make, you want to go maybe a hinge. Bigger, yeah. Bigger. It shrinks between um, 13 and 10%. So if you're making a cup that you want it to be four and a half inches wide, you always make it, or tall, you make it you know, five, five and a quarter, because it shrinks. Mm -hmm. But this, it doesn't, I'm not I'm married to any particular size. I'm just having, having fun in the process of making. So I'm gonna, just going to clean up the, the rim of this, and I take my sponge and I just wrap it around just to clean up the edge of it. And then you have that super thin wire. This is, look how thin this is. And this is my thick one. Can you see yeah. the difference? Oh, yeah. 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 It's big. Big difference. And this is really nice because... It just separates the clay from the wheel head without um, taking a huge chunk out of, out of the clay. So now what I need to do is I need to get myself a little piece of drywall. And I use drywall because it, on that shelf on the very bottom, okay. um, it helps to dry out the clay from the bottom and Usually the bottom, because it's on the surface, doesn't get a lot of air around it. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps to dry things evenly. So now what I'm going to do, thank you, You're welcome, is I'm going to dry my hands off, because I don't want the slime on the side of my pot, and I'm going to just gently lift it up. There we go. There we go. So now when I lift it up, it was round. Now I'm going to squeeze it. And I'm going to squeeze a little bit more because this clay has a memory. And once it starts to dry, we're in the firing process, it's going to go out a little bit. So maybe I even want to put some little finger squeezes in here. And maybe pull this out just a little bit. So it has some dimples. Yeah, it's got some dimples. Could be a really cute face. You could add some clay or uh -huh. carve into it. I did one last night. It looked like a belly button. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> so now I'm just going to do the same. I'll do it again. I'm just going to do it over. But this time I think what I want to do is I want to use less clay. I want to make a smaller one. Also, I wanted to see and show them how you turn it on, like with the switches and oh, okay. how you control so that. So my switch right here is a foot pedal. One thing that's nice about this wheel is that... Um, once I, once I turn it on and get it up to the speed I want, I just take my foot off. And this is a much smaller piece of clay. And the speed's a little too slow, a little bit faster.
spend hours in here and just get lost doing this. It's such a nice process. There is a zen to it. Absolutely, there is. Zen. So once I put it up into a cone, I push it down into like a hockey puck shape or a gumdrop. And this, this is where I know it's, it's centered and it's ready to be opened up. So I'm just going to stick my finger in. And these pots are really easy to throw because I kick it right to the wheel head. And I'm going to open this up. And there's a bit of a wobble in because I'm being aggressive. But in this case, it, it doesn't matter. And so when I start throwing, I mean pull, pulling up, squeezing it, you know, I have these two hands kind of nested together. And these two fingers basically mirror each other. Some potters do it a little off center. I like to do it with my hands mirrored and in sync rather than slightly off sync. You know, there's, you, you have your basic foundations of how to throw and then you modify what's comfortable for you. You'll see every potter has their own little twist of how they throw. Yep. They got their own rhythm and style. Mm -hmm. And would it change too if you have like you want a certain look? I mean, you have your own style, but like if there's something specific that you like, I don't know, yeah. you would change. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you after a while you develop your own style, and that's when people you know start to appreciate your work and buy it and follow you and things like that. Um, Oh, Linda says that the tool is a clay rib. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't think of it at the time. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> so this one right here, I'm going to just add some, some texture to it because I think it's interesting. Clay ribs. Clay ribs. Clay ribs. Yeah, and now I'm just taking off the excess off the bottom. So I just use my little wooden knife here just to scrape off a little bit. Next I'll, I'll do one more throw after this one and I'll throw like a, a regular vessel that can be a very small cup because the cup, I didn't make very big um, balls big enough to make a, a cup. So I'm cutting off the bottom. I'm going to dry my hands off. Lift it up and then I'm gonna squish it. <laughs> I think that's the fun part. Squish. It looks cute. Okay. There we go. Cool. Alright, so this one's a bigger one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it down and throw a cup. So this is how we throw a cup. It's the same process of centering, squeezing it up into a cone, my elbows or on my thighs, digging into my thighs. Getting a good upper arm, bicep, shoulder workout. Because <laughs> really, that's what it takes. If you have any shoulder issues or anything like that. This is not the craft for this you. This is not. Yeah, you can do hand building. So I'm holding my breath when I pull up. <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's, you're, this clay is um, a little on the stiff side, which makes it harder to throw. Yes, absolutely. And I, I, Mary Pat taught me, so I've been through the process um, the way she's describing it. That upper body strength that's required to do what she's doing right now, um, it's, it, it doesn't seem like it would be that much, but it's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot required, and you got to keep yourself firm because if you shift, the clay is going to shift, and then you got to start all over. Yeah. So right now, I just um, I centered it and I opened it up, and now I'm going to widen the inside of my pot. So this is really typically how you start out with, with any vessel that you're going to make. Um, you always start out with a, a cylinder because from a cylinder, you can make anything, a bowl, a cup, a plate. Um, so I'm trying to widen it, widen it out a little bit. And then once I open it up, 
I want to compress the bottom of it. And compressing the bottom of it is simply putting pressure on it. And you want to do that so that it doesn't crack, what's known as S cracks. So now I'm going to start pulling up, and my hands are kind of nested together. And I like to use my sponge because my sponge has a lot of moisture in and it won't get dried out and sticky. And when I pull up, um, I always work on the right side of my pot because of the motion. If I worked on this pot, um, of this side of the pot, the, the speed of the wheel would force my fingers to bend in and I would gouge my pot. So I always work around, for me, I work at like four o'clock. And then, um, and then with the, the motion of the wheel and the clay, it just goes right past your hands and your fingers can't bend. You can still gouge it if you bend your finger the wrong way, but naturally it's, it's just the way, um, the best way to work. And just when you're saying four o'clock, you mean? Four o'clock position. The position, the right, yeah. 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 So now what I'm gonna do is, is I have my one finger on the inside of the pot, and my right hand is a little below the hand on the inside because I have a floor on the inside that's probably about a half of an inch thick. So I'm just going to start squeezing and lifting at the same time. So does it feel different whenever like, you know to add water? What does it feel like? It just feels dry and your hand starts to you literally you kind of feel heat and it starts mm -hmm. to stick. And that's when you just take both hands off, stop, give the pot some, some moisture. And then um, if you're halfway in the middle of the pool, just go back to where you were. So typically the rule is, when you're just throwing little pots like this, is three, three pulls and you're done. And you always pull up. Because a lot of people think, oh, let's go up and down, let's massage. <laughs> <laughs> you need the massage, not the pot. <laughs> Speaking of massage, I can't wait till Miss Renee Noto opens back up. <laughs> yeah. Whoop, whoop, shout out. I'm so excited that we're slowly starting the process. Yes. It's a good thing. So here is a cylinder. And you can do anything once you get to this this stage right here. So I'm just gonna kind of shape it just a little bit more, thin out these balls, just a hair. And this is where the fun begins. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to get the excess water out from the inside. And now I'm gonna start to shape the pot. So we'll give this one a little bit of a belly. Tanya says she misses you. <laughs> Tanya, I miss you too. Mm -hmm. Tanya, did I have a dream about Tanya Grimes? Mm -hmm. I had a dream about Tanya last night. <laughs> <laughs> you miss her too. I miss her. I miss her. About her. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> and so here, here's a, this looks like kind of like a barrel. Remember those barrel mugs when you were yeah. a kid? Yeah. Oh, looks like that to me. But we'll, we'll put cheese. this out a little bit more. I don't know. And I can feel it getting sticky, so I'm just adding a little bit of moisture on the outside of the pot. And basically, that's kind of it. So now I want to think about the lip of the pot, and I have this dirty girls tool right here. And it has these notches on the side, and um, these notches create, um, they basically, it's like an extruder, it kind of helps you to shape the lip the lip of a pot, and that looks comfortable. And I'm just gonna flare it out ever so slightly. So I'm gonna get my sponge and I'm gonna start taking off the excess moisture. I'm get my sponge on the inside, get rid of the extra moisture on the inside. And now what I'd like to do is I would like to take off a bit of this excess. I don't have my other knife, but I think this will work. 
excess clay. So this is basically pre-trimming. And since I can't really see what I'm doing a lot, I have a mirror right there and I can look in the mirror to help me see the pot I'm making or I can bend over to the side. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come over here. Mm -hmm. See the mirror? That helps me oh. see what I'm doing. Because you know my perspective is for the most part, if you want to come over my shoulder mm -hmm. on top, you know, right. this, this is this is how I see, but how does the pot actually That's look? That's pretty. That's very pretty. So then this pot is for the most part ready to become leather hard. And once it becomes leather hard, it's at that point where you add a handle because right now it's super mushy. You saw how I could squeeze those other pots. I need to wait until this sets up. You know, I can let it sit out in front of this heater and in about two hours it's ready for a handle. Huh. Um, and, but, but before I do that, I'll, I'll trim it. And that's cutting away the bottom more and making a foot and um, then putting a stamp on it. So I'm going to set this over here as is. I'll just set it right here on this wheel head. Okay. So now that we did those two vases, the next step is, well, wait a second. There's no bottom on it. How can it be a vase? Well, that's the second or the third step for this whole thing. I'm going to rinse my hands off so that I don't transfer any of this wetness over to my clay pot. Okay, so I'm going to go get a paper towel and then I'm going to come over here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to I'm going to show you how we put a bottom on these vases right here. So I threw these last night. They're leather hard. So they're still pliable. Um, they're not bone dry yet. And so they're still workable. So I'm going to cut a piece of clay off of this block of clay that we started with. And then... I'm going to take this over to my slab roller. I have two slab rollers, and basically it's just like a giant steamroller for clay. But there's no steam involved. <laughs> I'm the steam. <laughs> and the roller. And, and the roller. And the roller. Yes, yeah, so come on over this way. We'll have to go around this way. <laughs> And this thing is an absolute beast. I can put a huge chunk of clay right here, and this thing will plow over it. Whereas this slab roller right here requires it to be relatively flat before you put it over. But this one is easy to adjust the different thicknesses, where this one has what you call shims, which are giant, giant boards that help you, um, you know, create the different thicknesses. But this one you can get really particular. But this one is just a great workhorse. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll flatten the clay initially here, and then I'll take it over to the North Star slab roller. But this clay slab right here is the perfect thickness that I want, which is about a quarter of an inch for the bottom. But when I smooth it out, because if you look on this, it has a texture. The canvas texture is picked up from the blankets on the uh, extruder. So I, I don't really want that to come out on my pot in this case. So I'll smooth it out. In the act of smoothing it out, you know, thins, thins the clay a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my tools. I have metal bibs, like wood, but they're metal. This one has teeth on it, which is great for uh, scoring the clay, and scoring is the technique that is used to get the clay to um, stick, two different clays to stick to each other. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to smooth, smooth this out. Flip 
flip the clay over. So I'm putting a decent amount of pressure on this. Seems like it would be very satisfying. It is. It's a good process. I, I, I love it. I mean, Me too. It's just a great escape. You know, yep. like sitting in front of that wheel, you just, you know, you're making a pot and, yep. you know, you just let it happen. What does this play going to be? So, yeah. Kind of hone in on your inner child and play with, like, it's yeah. almost like mud again, like playing with dirt. When, when, you know, you're in the process, you're like, oh, I can do this. And next thing you know, yep. it's, it's changing. You know, yep. it's, it's becoming. So I need to get a tool that's right over here. So I have my, my knife. I need a little bit of water. So I'm going to use this, this lovely pot right here. Lovely glass. This cup is made by Duncan Aww. It's a potter who comes in here. And I need a paintbrush. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to put a bottom on this. So I'm going to cut a piece of clay out right here. And I'm just going to set it on top of this, this little banding wheel, which is a great tool. And what I'm going to do is get an idea of how I'm just going to take off the excess clay. this off. Then I'm going to take the bottom of this off and I am going to score using the metal rib with the teeth on. Here, get it close. Right Look at that. It's actually quite sharp. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm scoring the clay which is, you know, disturbing it and creating lots of nooks and crannies so that when I go to put this clay on top, it has something to grab onto. But I'm also going to score this. And I'm going to come up over the edges just a little bit. And then the most important thing to ensure it sticks is adding water. And you always add water to the driest Clay. This is moist, just came out of the bag. I don't need to add water to it. This has been drying for over 12 hours. It has a lot less water in. So I add water to this, and then I'm just going to set it down on this piece of clay. Now I'm going to turn it upside down, and then I'm going to squeeze just around the edges to compress the two pieces of clay together to ensure a good bond. Okay. Jess Benton says hello. Hello, Jess. I love your face masks. <laughs> They're so cute. They, they are. Really cool. I knew she'd come up with something. How could you be a face painter and not? Yes. <laughs> right? She's doing a great job. And so then, as you can see, I have a lot of excess. So I'm gonna cut most of this excess off, but I wanna leave some because I wanna wrap it around the edges to ensure that I have no leaks. Because if this is going to hold water, I wanna make sure that there are no leaks. Okay, <laughs> that sounds interesting. I'm on board. <laughs> I just thought of that. I'm like, oh yeah, this is what we could do next week. So I'm again just going and compressing the clay. Clay loves compression. Compression is a friend of clay. And now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to smooth this up over the edge. And I get excess on my fingers and I just wipe it off. So what you're saying is that clay likes to be hugged. <laughs> like a, like yes. most of us. Yes. Aww. It's that new care button on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've got the compression on and smoothing on the interior or exterior, but now we need to focus on the interior. Can you see that? You can see. Oh yeah. Can you hang a little? Okay. So yeah, we I need to do that. 
Stay right where you are. I'm just going to grab a tool over here real quick. So this is a custom-made tool by Mr. Doug gave it. Really? Yes. Oh, my goodness. So he, he gave this to me yesterday, and this is the perfect little tool to get in these little spaces to smooth out the inside. Oh my goodness, just that's awesome. Perfect. Just to give you uh, the audience here that's watching a little reference, uh, uh, Doug Gaiman, uh, I kindly and lovingly refer to him as Uncle Doug just because he's such a wonderful human being. Uh, he started to throw pottery. He learned from Mary Pat about what, a year and three months, a year and yeah, four January, months ago? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so less than year. two years. And he's been making beautiful pieces. This is just a small one of his pieces and now I'm, I'm hearing that he's making these custom tools <laughs> i think doug has taken to pottery <laughs> he, he, he is a really creative really really creative guy and you know we have his um he makes pottery but i invited him to to produce some more to sell here it's at fantastic. the studio or even down at sama that would be a great That's venue fantastic. as well Absolutely. and um he also makes these really cool of bar stools, chairs, and Christmas trees, and other items out of horseshoes. So he recycles horseshoes. He's a farmer who's an ag teacher at Chestnut Ridge until he retired, but lifelong farmer. He grew up on a farm. And industrial arts, too. And Yeah, industrial arts. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, he's just, he's the kind of guy who likes to repurpose things, but his repurposing is in an artful way, which is pretty neat. Okay, so the next step on this pot is we have the bottom. So there's a lot of surface area on this bottom. So I want to minimize the surface area that touches your windowsill or shelf or wherever you're going to put this. So I'm just going to use my heel of my hand to just kind of make a dent. Give it a make, bump in. Make a little bit of a dent to lessen the, the surface area. And last but not least. Why would you do that? I mean. Um, so it's, um, a lot of times if you have pots, especially planters, you, you'll notice that if it's sitting on the counter, condensation will start. And plus less area to scratch because pottery isn't exactly super smooth, but there are some potters, like a local potter, uh, she puts silicone, clear silicone on the bottom of hers. So they don't slide nice, but they don't scratch at all. Mm -hmm. okay. Clever. Yeah. I never thought yeah. of that. It's very Our clever. Our does that. So oh. if you ever get some of her pots that are um, large bowls or vases or things like that, or planters, she puts silicone on the bottom, which is actually quite clever. Yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah. So last but not least, oh. I stayed. Oh, wait, 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 let's get a good, like, let it not get, yeah, because it's blurring, and then, yeah, the, brain, the, the camera needs to think a little bit. That's yeah. cute. So then I just press it on the bottom. <laughs> Aww. So then what I'll do is I'll, I'll finish all of these like that, and as you can see, the process, you know, it, it, it takes a while. It's con time consuming. Yeah, and then after this, I need to let it dry out completely. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what I'll do is I will get um, slip, which I think I'll do that to this pot right now. So there's things called glazing and things called um, underglaze or stained slip. And I think I would like to show you stained slip. Okay. And that's, that's done before you do your, the first firing. So stay right there. Focus in on this lovely pot. Linda Martin Sokolowski says, Miss oh, you, Mary Pat. Oh, miss you too, Linda. Just there. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. Here's some of the shapes. And even though they're all the same, they're all, they have like very different personalities. This is great, this little one. Yeah, little ones, I thought it would be really sweet for, you know, when your kids bring 
you hone little flowers. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to throw them away. You nope. don't want to hurt their feelings. And you want right. to appreciate the effort and thought. It's from the That's heart. Perfect little base for it. So this is, um, this right here is stained slip. So what this is, is just a white clay body with lots of water. And then I added a mason stain to it. And mason stains, you know, how they can colorize concrete. Oh, okay. Um, so. So it's just like this, a pigment, a it, pigment binder. It's, it's a pigment. Okay. That's all it is. And, you know, the more pigment you put in, the, the darker the, the color richer the will color. be. Okay. And, um, and then this can come in a variety of thicknesses. Right now it's, it's kind of, it's not too wet and it's not too dry. It's it just right. So. It looks like a thick yogurt or like a pudding consistency. Yeah, it's, it's like a really thick yogurt. So this is just a, your typical, you know, um, I don't know, it's not a hockey brush, is it? No, I was admiring it actually. And these are awesome, that, you know, cheap, fantastic. Cheap, um, Chinese style brushes. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm picking up some of the slip and what I want to do is I just want to drag it up from the bottom and I want to not put it on so thick that I, that I cover the whole thing because I really want to highlight the ridges that I exaggerated when I was throwing. And then I'll wait until this is dry and it you can tell when it's dry um in a couple of minutes it gets it the shininess goes away because I'll, I'll just add another i can probably go ahead and do it just add a little bit more to create a little bit more color and texture it's really highlighting those ridges beautifully yep so that creates more interest in the it's pot. Gorgeous. And then what I'll do is I'll just put a clear glaze over this when I go to fire it. And I may glaze the interior of this. I may not. And I might just use a clear glaze. So I'll, I'll figure it out when I get there. But um, I just love the look of this mm -hmm. right here. And it gives me an idea of what the pot will look like in the end. Yeah. So I was talking about the pot earlier. What time? Do you have time? Um, we have about 10 minutes. Okay. So I thought, you know, if we're all stuck at home or if you're ready to give your kid a summer project and you want to continue to social distance, but do an art project with me, you can do that. I have this um, uh, character pot where I take a pot that I've thrown and let me go grab my character pot. Okay. Yeah, I have a couple of them, like the mouth and things up there. Yeah, this one's my favorite. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just show you this this one right here. So this is a character pot. I like it. And I <laughs> typically use it to put my glasses on. I'm gonna grab whose ever glasses these. Those are, are mine. <laughs> and I and I put them that way. My glasses don't get lost it's in the student. No, <laughs> oh, that's super cute. She needs super one fun, of those. Right? <laughs> glasses holder, and he's yelling with joy that he has them on his face. <laughs> it's like I I love this. Yeah. So, as you can see, this is a regular pot right here. It, you can see the shape of the thrown pot, mm -hmm. and then everything else is added on. So, I like to do this project with, with um, kid groups that come in here. I've done um, Girl Scouts, I've done family groups, and um, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, so, any of kids. these could turn into that, really, if you could, flip them on their, on their edge and then kind of add. So, what about birthday parties? Do you do those, or is that oh, too hectic? That's a little too much. Yeah, I, I can't handle it. I'll be honest. I no, no, it. it's okay. That's um, why I asked. I didn't know. There's a lot of moving and hazardous parts in here, and it's not uh, necessarily a safe environment for children. That's why I like to do small groups. Mm -hmm. Like if there's a mom who's got a couple kids and they want to do an art project, mm -hmm. whether it's, if it's for homeschool kids or a small group of Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, um, kids can't be running around here. It's just yeah. not a safe environment for that. So this project right here is what we call, I'll, I'll just come over here and put this on the floor. So this is just the board with the canvas on. And 
that's so that the clay won't stick. But the character pot, this is what I have the kids do. So if you want to order one of these to make it at home, I will have kits available and you can take it home and make it and I'll have instructions and everything like that. And then you can bring it back and fire it and then pick it up later. So I will take this cup off of here that I just threw. This is this was going to be my coffee cup. <laughs> so this is what we have kids do. Just take take it and drop it. <laughs> It's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Like, look. It's the happiest mouth I've ever seen. <laughs> then, then you can build a character, whatever floats your boat. Which is great. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. On this. So that, that is something, if you're interested, message Pigeon Hill Studios through Facebook. And let me know. And I'll, I'll have a kit and instructions available for you. But we can demonstrate how we do this next week. Like. Absolutely. I Sounds think that's great. A great yeah. Idea. And those so are great gifts what we too. What we should do next week is have more than me doing it. <laughs> we should have a couple of us doing it. Okay. And if um, a kid wants to come along, because kids are really creative. I have a spare. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bring your spares, and this is what we'll do next week. That's fantastic. Clay Day Tuesdays. And don't forget, any day ending in Y is a day we donate. To SAMA to keep programs like this up and running. Our doors open for you to go enjoy incredible artwork and um, the awesome people behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a great little production crew happening and going on here. So I love that this its life started out as a mug and is now going to end up as like the happiest pot that ever was. <laughs> uh, and I think that those are great gifts and I think that that's a great idea. And I think if uh, folks at home are interested, you should definitely. Let us know, and we'll, we'll get you in touch here with Mary Pat at Pigeon Hill Studio, which is where we're filming right now. And next week, you should definitely tune in and see how we transform that happy mouth into a full-blown character, because that's coming, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. Do a little army of these, these happy little faces. <laughs> happy little faces. Happy faces. So I want to thank you guys so much um, for, for tuning in. Tomorrow, we are going to be joining Miss Jen Jed with some stencil fun. And if you have seen oh any of Jen's gosh. classes so far, you know it's a good time. So hopefully you tune in and she will step us through her process and her thinking and how she utilizes stencils and imparts some wisdom to you so that you can then create and transform stencils in your own way, in your own language. You no, know, it would be fun to get together with Jen to utilize yes. stencils on clay. Ooh, that would I be love a fun it. pairing. Mm -hmm. I love that. I'll talk to Jen and we'll see what we can come up with. This sounds like a great art gang that's coming together. <laughs> and I feel like we're all so excited. Uh, now that we can kind of be in the same room again, we're kind of like back to being uh, more normal than we were there. Uh, this is great. So definitely stay tuned. Tune in tomorrow. Uh, she's going to have some great wisdom to impart to everybody. Um, as Mary Pat said, if you're enjoying the programming, if you're enjoying what you've been seeing, um, you know, the donate button at our website is a great way to reflect that you're enjoying your time. Um, and also, please, please, please do not forget, if you do make something, send it to me. I want to see a picture. I want to see what you're doing. Show me what your work looks like. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your skill set. It doesn't matter what level. Just take a picture, send it into Sam's Facebook page and our website. Email it to us, whatever you need to do. I want to see what you're making, so we're going to put those all together in a slideshow, and when we open back up to the public, which is hopefully sooner rather than later, we're going to showcase your work in a museum. Uh, it's a great way to get yourself into a museum, so that's a cool opportunity. All right, guys, thank you so much. I want to thank Miss Mary Pat for giving us that incredible, incredible instructional everything. There's so much information here. It's a good, it's a good session, right? That was good. Uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care. Bye, y'all. <laughs>